Well, listen, when you look at the measures of volatility in the stock market, they're saying complacent, right? And if you look at those same measures of bond market volatility in the Treasury market, they're saying something very different. I think they're speaking to a heightened sense or a greater potential of a recession um, at some point this year. And you just mentioned it. It seems like we entered this year and the stock market got off to this great start because I think people had downshifted their recession expectations to a soft or no landing. And I think what's happened with this kind of banking crisis here um, is it just kind of, you know, accelerated the potential potential for a weaker economy. We know that credit conditions have tightened here. We know that access to credit is going to be harder. And it's interesting because one of the um, equity market indices that closed higher today was the Russell 2000. We know that there's a lot of smaller financial institutions in that, and they got a little bit of a bounce. But that has really underperformed over the last month and a half or so, down about 12 percent. So to me, I, I actually think that the equity market has probably not gotten the memo yet. I think it's about to do that when we get into Q1 earnings season in a few weeks. It does, Karen, feel as though the soft landing or no recession crowd has gone a little quieter in over the last six weeks yeah it or maybe does. the last I mean, maybe the last two three months really I don't know I feel like not that long ago just yeah. pre SVB yeah that it seemed like maybe a soft landing was was doable I mean I, I don't know I guess clearly this bank thing is a big problem in that even if we're even if this is it and I, I don't know if it is or isn't even if this is it you can't help but think that lending will really be you know, a lot tighter. And, and that, that is a, a suppressor. Um. And, and that has tightened everything for the financial system. And, and that brings it back to the Fed. So how much more work does the, because the Fed had said that they had more work to do. But if you think that this bank issue, I, I don't know whether we're calling it a collapse, a crisis, whatever the term is du jour, that's done some tightening to, to, to Dan's point. That's going to weaken whatever liquidity that's out there. After liquidity comes credit crunch. If you have both, then it's a bigger thing. It becomes a worry, Julie, doesn't it? For, not just for it, it becomes a, a concern not just for the lender, the banks that may not be uh, as inclined to lend, but also for potential borrowers who may be more nervous about taking on an obligation at a higher <laughs> interest rate. By the way. Yeah, not just consumers, right, but companies too. Yes. The, you know, the willingness to actually borrow is probably starting to soften. We're starting to see some indications that CapEx is also starting to soften. And so that has a ripple effect through the rest of the economy. I, you know, I agree that this shock does provide some deflationary pressure. The problem is, is it's, pro it's going to take time for us to really know if that's happened. And I think that this Fed is still very focused on being tough on inflation more than, you know, being able to anticipate where it's going to go, probably because no one knows where it's going to go.